All right, so now in this video, we're gonna go through an example um, where suppose I have uh, $100,000, so yippee, right? Uh, and I'm like, okay, well, let's invest that in, the, in a bank account. All right, so I invest that in a bank account that's gonna that's telling me they're gonna I'm gonna earn um, 4.35 percent APY. All right, um, and then I wait a few months and they give me some interest, and I'm I I, I want to check is that interest correct based off of what they told me the APY is. Okay, then also I want to project forward to see how much money will I have if I leave the money in this account. All right, now this is a simple example where I'm not adding or subtracting money throughout the month. And I will do that in, in a future video and show how that changes these calculations. But this is part of a, um, of a playlist uh, and the link to that playlist will be provided in the description of this video. But uh, most importantly, in previous um, videos of this playlist, we discussed two formulas that I'm gonna write here. The first is A equals P times one plus R over N to the N T power, okay? So this is saying that the amount that you're gonna have after time T is the amount that you started with plus, or times one plus the rate the simple interest rate divided by n, n is the uh, number of times the interest is applied per year, okay? So um, this formula is basically how we're going to be calculating these balances um, after uh, some compounding interest has occurred, okay? Now, um, the bank does not tell us are the simple interest rate. Rather, they tell us the APY. So the other formula that we discussed previously in this playlist is R equals N times um, APY plus one to the one over N power minus one. Okay, so this was the formula and we talked about how to derive that in a previous video. All right, but basically you're gonna to need to use this formula so that you're able to calculate the amount that you have after a certain amount of time. Okay, so let's start there. Let's start with calculating what is our simple interest rate based off of this APY. Um, in order to calculate that, I need the APY and I also need N. N, remember, is the number of times the interest is applied per year. Now, most bank accounts I have noticed compound daily but then give you the interest once a month. So it feels like they're compounding once a month, right? So N would just be 12, but I've noticed in my calculations that is not true, okay? So it's important that you go to your bank account and you see, try, try N equals 12, see if it works. If that doesn't work, try the number of days, daily compounding, all right? So, Number of times the interest is applied per year in a leap year would be 366 days. So remember this is 2024. So in a leap year, I have 366 days in the year. All right, despite it being a leap year, I've noticed that some banks will leave N in their calculations as 365. Okay, that will slightly change your balance. So it's important to know what is your bank using? And you can figure that out by doing these calculations we're discussing right now. Um, also, some banks will use 360. I do not know why, okay, but it is something I've noticed. So, um, you know, do these calculations and figure out for yourself what the bank is using, all right? Um, so let's go ahead and calculate R using that formula, the simple interest rate, um, and I'm gonna use Form Excel formulas so that later if I wanna change N, I don't have to rewrite this Excel spreadsheet, I just change it. So instead of writing 366, I'm gonna just write, I'm just clicked on that cell and it tells me the cell reference is H2, okay? So times, two parentheses, I'm gonna just click on that cell as opposed to typing it out, okay? Plus one raised to the power one over n, okay, minus one, close parentheses, all right, and then that's, there we go, that's my simple interest rate. 
okay? All right, so now, last thing I need to know in order to do this calculation is what is T? Now remember, T is the number of years, but generally, you know, like banks, they're gonna give us month monthly. They're gonna give us the, um, the interest every month. Well, actually, in their ledger, they're giving it to us every day, but then, you know, not actually giving us the money till the end of the month. So, um, you know, sometimes thinking about T, since T would just be a fraction of a year, uh, it's actually easier to think about n times t, which is something that I discussed in a previous video um, in this playlist, uh, that, you know, n times t, which is what the numerator, or sorry, what the exponent is here, um, it's, it's easier to think about that. And so that n times t is just the total number of times that the interest is applied um, in a certain period, okay? So it basically, it's just the number of days that went by. Okay, if you're getting interest every day, how many days went by in that period? Well, Excel will calculate that for you. Um, all I need to do is take the date and then subtract off the previous date. So, um, oh. yeah, it's 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 putting it as a dollar because they, they think I, I, I have dollars everywhere, but I, I don't want that to be a dollar. So I'm gonna, you know, in the home, I press this little down button here and then press general. Okay, so that's just three. Three days. Okay, three days have gone by between the 13th and 10th. That makes sense. Okay, then now I'm ready to go ahead and calculate A. Or um, A is like our balance. Let me go ahead and write it like that. Balance. My expected balance, right? If they've done their calculations correctly. So this will equal the principal or the amount that I had previous times one plus my interest rate. Okay, oops, not the APY, but my little interest rate divided by N. Okay, raised to the power of N times T. Okay, press enter. And there we go. So we can see that these two match. That's good. The bank did their math right. All right, I also might be interested in calculating this amount here. Let me insert amount, or this is like really your interest payment. Uh, I'll just write interest. Um, and this will just be the difference between the, the balance, the balance of the previous month. Okay, so you see that they match. So good job, the bank did their math right, okay? Um, next, let's go ahead and do that for the next month. Okay, take that difference in the days. Um, ah, it's still putting it as a, so let me go ahead and just highlight all of these and then press this little down, put general, okay. I don't want it to be a number format. All right, now my interest, or sorry, let's start, let's start with the balance, um, will be my previous month's balance, okay, times one plus my interest rate divided by my uh, N raised to the power right here. Okay, now press enter and we see that these match. All right, now let's do the interest, which would just be the difference between these two months. Okay, and we see that they match as well. Oops, we see that these match as well. So that's good. So, so far so good. Suppose I want to project forward a few months. So I'm gonna highlight these. Um, the Excel will recognize that we're doing the 13th of every month, which by the way is the way this bank works. This bank gives me the interest every uh, on the 13th of every month. Not every bank does that, right? It's different. Some banks do from the first of the month to the last of the month. You need to look at your bank and make sure you have those dates correctly uh, for when, um, you know, basically how many days have gone by for that interest payment. Okay, so that's really important you, you, that you look into for your Pacific Bank. All right, so click and drag this down and Excel is recognizing the pattern 
and we'll go ahead and do the 13th for all these other months. Okay, then uh, again, Excel will recognize the pattern here if I drag this down and it will calculate the number of days in each of those months. All right, before I do interest, I need to do balance because interest depends on the balance calculation. If I take this calculation, um, right now, if I were to drag it down, each of these cells would be moved down, which is good for the dates and good for the balance, uh, but not good. I want these two to stay where they are when I drag them down. So to do that, I'm going to, um, so notice this is red, just this is K3. So put like little dollar signs there, and that basically locks where that cell is, okay? And so when I push it forward or push it down, it'll, it'll stay put right here. But then the H and the F will, will move, okay? So then once you do that, click or get your little cursor to look like that little black cross, and then click, drag down, let go, okay? And you can double check. You see these stayed the same, but then these moved. Okay, then my interest payments, it's just the difference of the previous two, or this month versus the last month. And if I bring these down, there we go. Okay, so at the end of, um, at, at, in December, I would expect to have this much in the bank and I could sum up all my interest. See, you can see it down here. Basically, this is how much interest, $4,010.63. That's how much interest I've earned at the end of the year.